Okay, we are on Chapter 5 of the Commodore Plus 4 User's Manual, and I'm not going to set anything up. We're just going to roll right into the content and see you on the other side. Chapter 5 is all about numbers and calculations, and we're going to be looking at numbers and basic operators, performing calculations, we're going to be using variables, we're going to use intermediate mode, numeric functions, and we're going to look at random numbers and other functions. There are two types of operators you'll find when working in Commodore BASIC and most computers. You have mathematical operators, which is seen here on the left, and then you have relational operators. We're going to be looking at mathematical operators in this chapter. We'll look at relational operators, how do things relate to each other in a programming chapter later on. Let's start playing with basic mathematical operators using something we call immediate mode. Immediate mode lets us go ahead and use the Commodore Plus 4 like a calculator. Unfortunately, we can't just type 2 plus 2. You'll see what it does is it creates a line with plus 2 as a command. If we listed it, you would see 2 plus 2 as you've seen. So I've cleared that out. Let's try putting a print statement in front of the 2 plus 2 and you see it finally works as a calculator and prints 4. Now, let's keep in mind that when we type a question mark, it is actually equal to the print command in using it in immediate mode or when using it within Commodore Basic. So let's try another command. Let's do print, and we're gonna do two times two, and of course we should get the same number four, so now you see how we're using our plus four as a calculator just right off the cuff using immediate mode. Let's try two minus two, what do we get there? Of course we should get zero, Let's try another one. Let's do two divided by two. That'll give us 12. Of course it does. It gives us one. My math is not that bad, trust me. Or actually sometimes it is, as you're probably gonna find later on in this video. Let's clear our screen and try something else. Remember F3 to clear your screen. We're gonna do print. We're gonna do two plus two, hit enter. Of course we get our four. Let's go ahead and scroll that back up using our cursor keys. Let's do minus two. See, we get zero. Let's do division. And then let's try one more standard mathematical operator. And two times two is four. Now, what if you wanna use exponentiation or two to the power of something? Let's do two to the power of, eh, let's try two. We use our arrow up, hit enter, and you see now we have exponentiation. Of course, that's four. Let's raise that something a little bit larger. We'll change this to a four, and you'll see we have 16. Two to the power of four is 16. So there's exponentiation in immediate mode on your plus four. Now you can do fractions. Of course, one divided by two is half or 0.5, but you're not really working in fractions naturally. You're just converting one divided by two to 0.5 in decimal form. So you're never going to receive an output in fractional format. One thing to remember is you cannot use commas in your values. This does not work. What this is doing is simply printing two, spacing over to the next quadrant and spacing another two. We talked about spacing and print spacing in quadrants in our previous chapter. Go back and check out that video if you have questions about that function. Let's go ahead and remove that comma and you'll see now we get the proper value knowing that it still hangs that two over to the right because it doesn't clear the whole line. It just shows that result over the previous characters that it needs. Let's talk about the order of calculations now. Your plus four will always perform calculations in a certain order. And there's also a precedence of calculations built into algebra. The Commodore will follow that basic premise. So you see here, I've done 139 divided by 493 plus five, and the value is 5.28 and some change. Well, what happened there? Well, the first thing it does in the order of calculations is it performs multiplication or division first. In this case, 139 divided by 493. So here's what it would look like if I put this in parentheses, knowing that everything in the parentheses is calculated first and then everything exterior of the parentheses is calculated second, you can see that our line above was performed like this. The 139 divided by 493 is calculated first and then we added five. I've cleared the screen and we wanna talk about pi next. Pi is that value you've always heard, 3.14 and a bunch of change, which represents the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. And the pi function is built into the Commodore, but again, you can't just type the character and expect a result. You have to do print the pi character or the function, and then you'll get your results as is shown here. So if you have a very specific need for pi, 
within your programming or within your immediate mode math, the good news is you don't have to type 3.14159265. You can simply type pi divided by, in my case, 374, and you see we get a value. And that value is actually in scientific notation. So let's talk a little bit about scientific notation next. Now, scientific notation is a way to represent large numbers. The plus four can't represent numbers larger than nine characters. So in order to represent those larger numbers, it uses scientific notation, which E is a function of that scientific notation, and it means to the power of 10. So let's give you an example. I'm gonna use a line of code here, which is just a remark code, and then we're gonna type in a value, 0.000, .000 Three three five nine. Now, this in scientific notation would be written as three point three five nine. I transpose the characters. We'll fix that here in just a minute. E raised to the power of negative four, which means I'm going to take the decimal point in between the two threes and I'm going to move it to the left four times. So if we go back to our original value, you'll see that is the case. That decimal that was between 3.3 is now at the very beginning of that line and we have four characters to the right. Let's do another one. Here's another example of scientific notation. This time we're going to do 105000 and that is equaled in scientific notation to 1.050 or in this case we don't need to put a zero because we can substitute to the power of 10 five places. Let's do one more just so we are sure everybody's got this scientific notation stuff down. Again, feeling kind of like a basic math instructor today and I'm not very good at it. All right, so here's another example. You see 0 0.0666 is equal to 6.66, 10 raised to the power of negative two. There we go. Listing that, you'll see we have all of these captured in a nice basic program that we can save for future reference. And speaking of saving programs for future reference, I have created a supplemental disk image for this series of videos. And you can find a link to that in the video description below. We've performed calculations in immediate mode. Now what I wanna do is show you how to perform calculations in a basic program. It's very similar to what we've been doing, only now we're gonna be adding line numbers at the beginning of each calculation. As you can see here, each line, 10 and 20, is going to perform two calculations. Can you guess what's going to happen when I type in the run command? And you'll see that we have the values three, one, four, and two. Three and one is separated by a quadrant distance that is specified by inserting a comma between those two mathematical operators in lines 10 and 20. In the previous example, the program only printed the results of the calculations. Now what I want to do is create a program that will print some additional information along with the results. I'm going to start a new basic program with two lines of code. The first line of code will be a print command and we will print 2001 divided by 2010. Now you'll note that that calculation is within quotation marks. If you remember from our last chapter, you should suspect what's gonna happen. 20 is going to print two times three. And when we run that, you see that 2001 divided by 2010 is actually printed out. It's not calculated. However, line 20, print two times three is calculated. So you can see how we can display the results or we can display the calculation by including quotation marks around the calculation. What if you want to print the calculation and the result in the same line? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back and modify the original program that we had, which is two lines, and we're going to modify line 10. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this calculation to 2 times 3 plus 1. And what does that equal? So I'm going to represent that here with our print statement. So it's going to print 2 times 3 plus 1 which is the calculation. And then we're gonna say after that, we're gonna do a semicolon, which is gonna move the result of the actual calculation right next to the characters between the quotations marks. So we're gonna say again, two times three plus one. What happens if we run that? Now it's going to say two times three plus one is equal to seven. You'll notice there's an extra character Commodore will always insert that extra character to the left of the seven. And then you'll also see that line 20, that calculation was performed. So if you want to print the calculation and the results of the calculation after the print statement, 
type the calculation between quotation marks, followed by a semicolon, and then the calculation without quotation marks. Now let's go ahead and clean this up. Let's get rid of line 20. Let's run it. And finally, there you see it by itself. Let's list the program one more time. And there you go. Now, in case you were wondering, and who wasn't, yes, the Commodore Plus 4 can work with negative numbers. Here, in this case, you'll see I'm going to do print 3 minus 6 in immediate mode, and you see that we get negative 3. And just for grins and giggles, let's do one more calculation in immediate mode. We're going to do 24 divided by open parentheses 6 plus 2. So again, remember the order of precedence or how calculations are completed when using a Commodore in immediate mode or in basic programming. Let's throw everything we've learned into a new immediate mode command. We're going to say print 2 to the third power equals, and close quotations, semicolon, and you'll see I'm forgetting something. We'll go back and fix that here in just a minute. Uh, 2, we'll use our exponentiation to the third. You'll remember that as we've talked about earlier in the chapter. Now let's go ahead and you'll see I have my syntax error. So let's go ahead and remember we can just go ahead and fix that by scrolling right back up and then that space we have, let's just go ahead and put in that quotation mark. So now press that and there you go. So there again is how you can combine your calculation and your results. And in this case using two to the power of three. Anybody who's taken basic math and basic algebra knows that variables play a very important part in mathematical calculations, and that's even more so with basic. So now let's take a look at using variables in our calculations, but then we'll also take a look at looking vari at variables within a basic program. So I'm going to type a line of code here, or a couple lines of code. We've got a equals 3, and then we have 20. We want to say print the total, and we'll do a colon here of a, and let's multiply a by 4. So we know that a in line 10 is equal to a value of 3. So 3 times 4 in line 20 should be calculated, and you'll see that we've combined our print the total colon with the actual total of the value of a times 4, which will be 12. Again, a is the variable. a is holding a numeric variable of 3. In this example, a, the variable a, was a numeric value. And that numeric value was a floating point value, which means it could have been a real or a whole number. An example would be 23.5 or 12. That value could also be an integer or a whole number. Examples of that would be 15, 100, and 2, and 3. But a variable can also be a text string. A text string could contain letters, numbers, or other characters that are found within quotation marks. Examples of that might be total, colon, as we see in line 20, and it could be like day one or it could be Commodore. So how does the Commodore know what type of variable you want to use? Well, there are certain types of syntax for those variables. You see above where we did line 10, A equals three, A without anything next to it, and then equal followed by a value, specifies that that is a floating point variable. And you see some examples here. For instance, I can use x, I can use ab as a variable, I can use t4 as a variable. And the examples of values you might find are 23.5, 12, 1.3, e to the plus 2. Now, if you want to specify a whole number or integer, then you would put a percent sign after the variable. This means that any value you get is going to be truncated to a whole number. So no matter what the value is, even if it's 12.75, it's going to result in 13. It rounds up or it rounds back. In the case here, we have 15, 102, and 3. Those are all integer values. If it's a text string, we're going to use the dollar symbol after the variable. And then what that's going to do is say, this variable will contain a string of text, characters, or symbols within quotation marks. Some examples of that might be total, or it could be 
CBM or Commodore. So those are the types of variables you can use while programming or actually in immediate mode on a Commodore Plus 4. We've done a lot in immediate mode. Let me create a new program for you. I've cleared the screen and now what I want to do is create an actual program that will ask for input from the user. Now this is more practical than anything else that we've done so far in this chapter. So I'm going to go ahead and get the program typed in for you and then what we're going to do is talk about the lines as we go. So line 10 is basically a remark statement that says what this program does. It needs numeric data. 20 is going to say, hey, print, enter a number. So you're going to see that appear on the screen. That shouldn't be a surprise to you. Line 30 is where the magic happens. It's going to say input X and then I have a percentage mark. If you remember, percentage means that it's going to ask for a whole number. And then on the next line, we're going to print something with that value. In line 40, what we're going to do is print some kind of result. So here I'm going to say nice going and ace. And of course we have to be excited about it. So let's go ahead and put an exclamation point after that because you were able to actually input a number into your Commodore computer. Then what we're going to do is create another line of code that produces the result of what you entered into the computer when you were prompted for information. And you'll see I'm displaying the value by typing the variable. And again, that is a integer variable, so we need to make sure and put the percent symbol after it. If you're following along in the user's manual, one of the things you'll notice is that line 50 in the printed manual actually forgets to put the print command in line 50, so make sure you add that. Let's run it. Let's see, enter a number, let's do 34, and there you go, nice going Ace, I read your number is 34. And you can see how now we can create a program to ask for input and then act upon that input to print it out for you. You could also include that value into some kind of calculation within your program and then print the results of your input plus the calculation in the output statement. The particular program that we just typed is kind of boring. You know, about the most excitement we have right now is ACE with exclamation. Let's go ahead and use some of the skills we've learned in previous chapters to make this output a little more fun and a little more exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and modify the program. And when we get to the new portions of the program, I'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so we're going to say nice, not ging, go, go, I can't type, going. And then what I want to do is instead of just ace in black, let's go ahead and change and add a color. And so I've typed a character code in here. We'll put ace and we'll put our exclamation point back in. And we got to remember to turn that off and turn it back to black. So I've done that and you can see the code in here now. We're going to print ace. Let's run that and see what happens. Let's enter a number, 34, and there you go. Now, nice going ace in red. And then I read your number is 34, but we can do better than that. Let's make the output even more exciting. So I'm going to retype line 50. I read your number as, and let's blink the output. Remember how to do that from our previous chapter? So we use the flash on. That will print our variable. We'll list it and let's run it. 34, and there you go, flashing our output. In Commodore Basic 3.5, which is included in the plus four, it also includes numeric functions. Numeric functions are like those functions you find on advanced calculators, such as sine, cosine, and tangent. Not so much advanced in the 2000s, but 1984 to include functions in a calculator was pretty advanced. The syntax for a function is some function followed by some value within two parentheses, as shown in this example. Let's look at a common trigonometric function that you've probably seen. What we're going to do is print the sign of some value of x. We've not defined x as a value, so what we'll do is we'll go back and we will substitute the character x with the value of 1. Now when we execute that command, we get the sign of 1 is equal to 0.841. There's probably a bunch of mathematicians out there who could have done that on their own. 
We just used a function in immediate mode. Let's use one in a program. Let's start a new Commodore basic program. We're going to do 10 for x equals one to five. We've not seen that before, but x equals one to five is going to count up from one to five. And then what we're going to do is print the square root of some number, which is going to be x, which is our variable from line 10. And we're gonna say the square root of when x is equal to something is, and it will actually print that value on the screen. And you'll see we've taken the square function and we're gonna replace the number that was x in that function as that value. And then the next x will simply move back up to the line and re-execute that code until we've gone through numbers one, two, five. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, print the square root of each of those. There we've listed it, let's run it. And there you go, square root of one is one, square root of two is 1.4 and some change and so on and so forth. So now you've seen how we can use a for statement to calculate a series of functions and values for a function within a command and then go ahead and kind of go back to the very beginning and start over. It's a pretty interesting that they included that in this chapter because it's starting to get pretty advanced for someone who is brand new to programming. But for most of us now in a modern age, we're probably pretty familiar with what those commands do and this is no surprise for you. So there's a great example of how to use functions in a basic program. The last concept we're going to cover in this chapter is the concept of random numbers. And random numbers is a numeric function built into Commodore Basic 3.5. And random numbers are so important in programming, especially if you're doing things like simulations or games programming. But it's important that you know how to limit the number of random numbers you're going to receive when you place a random number request. And in the program I'm typing now, what we're doing is asking Commodore for a series of random numbers from a certain selection set. And let me go ahead and finish the program and then we'll come back and talk about it. You'll notice here what I've done is I've used colons to separate three different commands or three different basic programming lines and added those in as a single line. Each one of those statements between those colons could have been a separate basic programming line, but I've combined them using a colon command. You'll remember that from a previous chapter. And we said 4x is equal to one to five, find the random value of x from one to five as it goes through, and then next x, which will go back to the very beginning and start over in our loop. Let's run that and you'll see we get five completely random numbers, not within any range whatsoever. It's just five random complex numbers. A lot of times when we use random numbers, we really want them to be whole numbers. And we want them to fall within a range of values, like one to 10. We don't want anything outside there. So let's take our program, let's modify it, and do something so that we can give a little more specificity to the type of random value we get. Let's create a single line of code that will produce a random number between one and five. So the code's going to specify a lower limit as well as a range. The lower limit in the formula refers to the lowest number you want the computer to choose from. The range is how many numbers are in the total group. So in this case, as I'm typing, the five at the very beginning is the range. Then we have our random function. Then I'm gonna put a plus one. That plus one is our lower limit. So when I execute that line of code, it, it will generate a number between one and five. Let's run the basic code and you'll see we have five is selected in this specific case. Let's run it again. There you go, now we have a two. Ah, let's try one more time. And two again, that's interesting but it is completely random between one and five. Running a single line of code over and over is not the most efficient way to get a list of random numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and modify the code so that it will display a list of five random numbers when I execute the code once. Here you see we're using our old buddy, the for next loop to ensure that the code is executed five times. Here's our final code, 4x equals one to five. We'll clean that up just a little bit here for you. 
and then we print our random number between one and five. We're gonna change the A1 to X because it needs to be a variable pulling from the for next loop. We run it and you see that we get five random values. Run it one more time and we get five more random values between one and five. Need 15 values instead of five, just go back to that for statement in line five and change it to 15, rerun the program, and now we have 15 different random numbers between one and five. Now we're starting to really see the power of programming in BASIC on the Commodore using things like for next loops and functions. Now we're gonna tie it all together. We're gonna to look at some things that we've done in previous chapters. With this chapter, we're gonna create a user defined function. And the user defined function is gonna be kind of fun. So we're gonna new out our program. We're gonna clear our screen and we're going to type in a program that's going to use a user defined function to play with the color scheme of some text on our screen. So what is a user defined function? Well, it allows you to program a formula and then let your plus four plug in values to be calculated, similar to what we've already done with the random number generator. This can be created and used in many different ways. Section 10 of the encyclopedia in the user's manual contains a whole listing of mathematical function derivatives which can be used to define these user functions. Okay, I'm gonna type in the program and then we will come back and talk about it. Line 10 defines a new function, a user function called FNR. Now, if you look at the end of that line, you'll notice it's very similar to our random number generator. Line 20 is a new command for us, it is a do, which begins a do loop. Look at line 50, those two lines go together. Do this and create this loop until I say stop, which is usually with a run stop button. Line 30 does some coloring, which we'll see in the program when it runs. And then line 40 is going to print, the search goes on. So if you mix line 30 with 40, can you guess what's going to happen when I run this program? Let's type the run command and find out. And there you go. We see that the search goes on. Each line is printed in a random color that's been pulled from the color command in the basic program. That's kind of fun. I kind of like that. Let's run stop that and you'll see we have a break in 40. Now I'm going to go back and change my text to black so it's easier to read. And here's the original program again. Again, you can take a look at line 30 and see where all the magic happens in its function that we've created. I'm gonna change that to 32. Let's see if anything different happens when we run the program. You'll see that we get an error. There's an illegal quantity error in 30 because it can't produce more than 16 different colors. It can only do up to 16 colors on the plus four at a time. So 32 is a bogus number. We can't use it. So you have to be careful. Let's go back to 16, rerun it. That cleans it back up. So you have to know the, ex the extents or the limits of your function and the commands that you are working with. And you'll find most of those in the encyclopedia at the back of the user's guide. That completes chapter five, numbers and calculations. Our next chapter is chapter six. It will be beginning basic programming where we'll take a look at an introduction to programming, programming modes, input output statements, control statements and loops, conditional statements. We'll come back to those, subroutines and remarks. I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna take a lot of what we've already learned and we're gonna to start to do even more. So make sure you come back for chapter six. All right, that completes chapter five of the Commodore Plus Four User's Manual. Remember to like and subscribe below so that you can be reminded when chapter six is released. And also I want to remind you that I had a special project in between chapters four and chapter five I call the Tedwino Project. The Tedwino is Tapwino software on top of an Arduino in a case that I designed to 
meet the design aesthetics of a plus four and I hope you'll check it out. I'll have a link in the video description below. There'll probably also be a card at the end, but I think you're gonna appreciate it if you are a plus four user because now you finally have a data set clone that mimics that wonderful design of the plus four to include those vents and the color and everything. So I hope you'll check it out. Also, always, as always, remember to leave your comments below. I look forward to those. And let me know what I messed up in chapter five. I'm sure there are things out there that some of you have said, you know, you could have done this better or you may have messed that up, Stephen. So look forward to your comments. Until next time, Retrocombs out. <laughs>